Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Since before the end of the Cold War, stealth has been an important aspect of modern aircraft design. This began with the introduction of the F-117, but continues in state-of-the-art fighters like the F-22 Raptor. Introduced in 2005, the Raptor is a twin-engine, stealth tactical fighter aircraft designed for various strategic uses, including air superiority, ground attack, and electronic warfare. Despite an array of formidable weaponry and a top speed of Mach 2.25, the F-22's biggest ally is its stealth capabilities which help it evade radar detection and engage enemy targets with minimal risk of being detected. In the case of the F-22, the stealth is the result of several features, including the shape of the aircraft and a conscious attempt to reduce its radar cross-section. However, the real advantage comes from a specialized stealth coating, consisting of specialized radar-absorbing materials, or RAMs. First, the aircraft surface must be meticulously cleaned to ensure proper adhesion during the application process. Afterward, multiple layers of RAMs are applied followed by a series of radar-absorbing paints containing tiny spheres coated with carbonyl iron. These work by absorbing radar waves, rather than reflecting them back to the receiver. Thanks to new mechanical coating processes, F-22s can be painted much faster, more accurately, and more efficiently. As impressive as the F-22 Raptor is, the program proved to be far too expensive for the U.S. military to continue. Estimates say that each aircraft ended up costing around $150 million to produce, while the program itself carried a price tag of over $67 billion. Perhaps more importantly, the nature of military engagement changed from 2005 to 2011, with a new focus on counterinsurgency, terrorism, and asymmetrical warfare, where combatants have vastly different military capabilities. The last F-22, tail number 4195, was completed in December 2011. In total, just 187 aircraft were built. For now, the F-22 remains an integral part of the United States military arsenal. However, many leaders believe they will need to start phasing the aircraft out as soon as the 2030s. Its replacement is not only more versatile, but far less expensive. Most importantly, it's well suited to quickly switch between the wide range of roles often required in a modern battlefield scenario. The F-35 Lightning II was also developed by Lockheed Martin. However, even though it's been less than a decade since the introduction of the two planes, they are very different types of aircraft. Rather than focus on superiority alone, the F-35 was designed as a multi-role stealth fighter. As it's capable of performing air-to-air -air combat and air-to-ground strikes as well as intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions, 
The U.S. hopes the F-35's three variants will end up replacing multiple aging aircraft. Not only does it boast a top speed of Mach 1.6 and a range of around 1,200 nautical miles, but it can carry a vast array of weapons in internal bomb bays, as well as on external hardpoints. In order to bring such an advanced aircraft to life, Lockheed Martin needed to invest millions of dollars in creating a revolutionary production process. The result is a collaborative effort involving multiple countries and companies, including BAE Systems and Pratt & Whitney. The F-35 is assembled using a modular approach, with various components assembled off-site before arriving at the final facility. Throughout the design of the assembly line, Lockheed Martin and their partners actually adapted or invented several new technologies. Perhaps the best example is the projection work system, which uses high precision laser projectors to display work instructions, alignment marks, and assembly guides directly onto the aircraft structure. This improvement alone is estimated to cut production times drastically, saving more than 100 million over the life of the F-35 program. The integrated assembly line also utilizes state-of-the-art technology such as 3D printing, automated guided vehicles, and robotic assembly. The F-35 has a total of three variants. Namely, the F-35A is the conventional takeoff model, while the F-35C is designed for catapult-assisted takeoff on aircraft carriers. The third model, the F-35B, is designed for short takeoffs and vertical landings, owing to a Rolls-Royce designed lift fan located behind the cockpit. Capable of producing up to 20,000 pounds of thrust, this fan allows the F-35B to operate from unconventional runways or even from the decks of small ships. They were aided by a swiveling exhaust nozzle that can rotate 95 degrees downward, further stabilizing the plane during landing, takeoff, or hovering. Though VTOL aircraft have been around for decades, the F-35B is by far the most advanced version. Even forgetting the F-35B's unique vertical takeoff capabilities, the standard Lightning engine remains one of the most advanced in the world. The afterburning turbofan was developed specifically for the fighter, which is why Pratt & Whitney dubbed it the F-135 PW-100. It weighs more than three tons and is capable of producing 28,000 pounds of thrust in standard mode and 43,000 pounds with the afterburner engaged. This extremely high thrust to weight ratio plays a big role in the F-35's superior speed, agility, and payload capacity. Since the F-35 was introduced in 2015, thousands of maintenance personnel have had to be trained specifically on servicing this engine and its unique needs. In many ways, the F-35 is reminiscent of another single-engine fighter still in use by militaries worldwide, the F-16 Fighting Falcon. 
Though it was originally designed by General Dynamics, the F-16 has been under the purview of Lockheed Martin since 1995. Later models feature a Pratt & Whitney F-100 PW229 afterburning engine, which can generate around 29,000 pounds of thrust. The engine weighs about half as much as the model in the F-35, making it far easier for maintenance crews to work on, especially in less well-equipped air bases. The F-16 was developed at a very different time than the F-22 or F-35. When it joined the U.S. fleet in 1978, air superiority, not stealth, was still the primary goal of all fighter aircraft. In the event of the Cold War turning hostile, the F-16 needed to be agile, versatile, and cost-effective. In fact, it was specifically designed as part of the Air Force's lightweight fighter program. The result was one of the most effective and longest lasting fighters in history. After nearly 50 years on the front lines, the F-16 is actually still in production. This latest model is known as the F-16V, codenamed the Viper. Among other upgrades, the new F-16 features state-of-the-art avionics, including mission computers and displays. This helps make it more compatible with modern weapon systems than its predecessors. The production process for the new F-16 also received an upgrade from the older models. The primary production facility for the F-16 is located in Greenville, South Carolina. However, a variety of components and subsystems are manufactured by partners and suppliers spread out all over the world. The Greenville location mainly assembles the fuselage and then installs the major systems, such as avionics and engines. The bulk of the process is what's known as the final assembly, when the various sub-assemblies are joined to form the complete airframe. Though many earlier F-16 models have already been retired, others are getting a second chance at life through the QF-16 program. This unique initiative involves converting retired F-16 fighter jets into unmanned aerial vehicles, also known as drones. These converted aircraft, dubbed QF-16s, are then used as aerial targets for training purposes and weapons testing. The conversion process is managed by the Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group and involves first stripping the F-16 of unnecessary equipment and systems. The engineers then install a range of features that allow it to be remotely controlled, including flight control computers, telemetry systems, and sensors. Most interesting of all is the fact that QF-16s can not only be controlled remotely, but they can also perform pre-programmed flight paths and maneuvers, mimicking enemy moments and tactics. Who knows? One day, they too may be equipped with stealth functionality, if only to ensure the U.S. pilots stay at the top of their game. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it.
Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.